Joined now on the show by St. John's Sea Dogs forward, Peter Reynolds. Peter, thanks for joining me on the show. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. So I was curious. So this season was obviously an interesting one for everyone around Canada and North America, really, and I suppose the world with just the whole COVID situation. So you're with the Sea Dogs now in the QMJHL. How how was the season for you guys? And was there ever really like a, a threat to your season coming to an end? Were you ever worried about that kind of stuff? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it was for sure a tough season. Um, I mean, you never knew what was going to happen and never really had a set schedule. Um, during Christmas, we had a two-month break and didn't know if we were going to come back. So I guess that was probably a moment where we were, we didn't know what was happening and we didn't know if our uh, season was done. So it was a, uh, it was a tough year, but still fortunate that we got to play uh, the amount of games we did play. So uh, it was a good year, but uh, obviously it was tough in, in its own way. So I'm curious to know what kind of player you are for people who haven't seen you play. I was looking through your elite prospects and you had two penalty minutes this season and then two in the playoffs as well. Uh, there's a team I cover here in Alberta and he, a kid on the team and he had 10 penalty minutes throughout his four years of junior hockey career and he always <laughs> said he's like he's like the rest would kind of just let go of some things and like when scrums would happen like guys maybe wouldn't challenge him and stuff like get roughing calls is that kind of how you think things went for you this year or what was your strategy to stay out of the box uh no I don't try to stay out of the box I mean I think I'm I'm pretty smart with my stick um but I think I could have could have taken a few more penalty minutes I think a big step of mine is starting to throw the body more and kind of get in the, the rougher areas uh, as a smaller guy, I guess, too. I mean, you kind of want to show your compete level. So that's something I want to build upon. So also in your lead product, you've, you're a well-traveled player, to say the least. You know, so your friend Fredericton, New Brunswick, you're now in St. John's in Newfoundland, and you played in Chilliwack last season, and you played with Shattuck in Minnesota, I believe that is, like, what was it like kind of traveling from place to place like every for the past three seasons, I suppose? It's kind of what you've been doing. It's quite a few kilometers on the car, I'm sure. Like, what was the whole experience like for you traveling all those places? Yeah, I mean, at the start, it was tough. I left home at 12, um, so I got used to it at a young age. But uh, once I was used to being away, it was a lot of fun. I mean, for the most part, I was living in a dorm with my friends um, and teammates, so um, a kid that age can't really ask for much more. Um, but it was an unreal experience while I was at Shattuck. And then I was out west uh, in BC. And they were both uh, very, very good opportunities for me. And uh, I'm pretty fortunate that I got the chance to do that. So another thing, too, I've heard this in like for the NFL, for example, a lot of coaches like to kind of change who their assistants are and the coordinators are. And I'm sure that's the same for other sports, too. Do you think playing for those three different teams kind of helped you having three different voices for the last three seasons and how you became a player, like different ways you could improve your game? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think all coach kind of brought um, a different aspect and which helps grow your game to a more complete um, type of player. I think that um, right now my coach really focuses on the defensive side of the game. And that's something that I've been looking to build. So I think um, every coach wants and looks for something different out of other uh, players. So I think, um, like you said, it's uh, it's been great to have three or more coaches in the past couple of years um, just to touch on different areas of my game. So how was it playing in the BCHL? You know, for junior A leagues, especially in Canada, that's probably the highest you can get. And if a Chilliwack too, it were the national champions, I believe, three, three or four years ago, maybe not even that long ago. What was it like playing in that league and kind of experiencing that? Yeah, it was a good league. I mean, it was my uh, first year playing junior hockey. Um, but I was a 16-year-old, so it was kind of new to me. Um, but it was, a, it was a phenomenal experience. Um, I had great teammates and great coach in Chilliwack. So, um, I mean, I thought it really helped me grow my game um, and kind of give me that experience um, as a small small 16 year old against some bigger guys that came down from the WHL. Um, so I thought it really helped me kind of get a tougher grasp to my game. Um, so it was a, it was a great experience. So you obviously are now with St. John's and you 
jump from junior A to major junior. So now you're obviously not attending Boston College too. What was the what was the attraction to go back to St. John's after you were drafted by them a few years ago in the first round? What kind of made you want to take that next jump, just kind of be closer to home in a way too? Yeah, I mean, with COVID happening, um, it was going to be tough to be ac across the country, um, hoping that a season would happen. So I knew that if I was in St. John, close to home, um, if there was no season, I would be able to maybe get down there and practice a couple times. But obviously, we're fortunate enough that uh, we did have a season. Um, and when we uh, had a break for COVID, I was still only an hour away. And there was no restriction for me getting home. So um, but I think COVID was a big part of it and just being close to uh, my family for the first time in several years. Yeah, so I guess with that decision on with COVID, that obviously makes a lot of sense. And I feel like there's a few guys who kind of did that this year, maybe not gone from junior A to major, but also just trying to be closer to home in that sense. So were your coaches obviously pretty understanding of why that decision was made? And like, I don't want to say hold it against you or anything by that, because I'm sure that wasn't happened, but, you know, just, I guess, understanding of what the situation was. Yeah, I think it was pretty understanding for them. Uh, I mean, none of them knew kind of what was going to happen next year, including myself. So, I mean, it was tough to argue anything because um, nobody really knew what was what was going to happen, how long COVID was going to last. So um, they were, they were understanding and um, they were good about it. So I couldn't, I, I felt pretty fortunate how they reacted. So. Yeah, for sure. So while you were in Chilliwack, you were able to represent team Canada, at the under 17s. And what was, what was that like? I would imagine representing team Canada is always a goal for basically every junior hockey player and every kid like, how did you receive the news? And obviously you guys went on to win bronze. Like, what was what was it like? Yeah, I mean, um, I think it's every kid's uh, dream to wear the Maple Leaf and, and represent their country. And I, I just found out through a phone call. Um, I don't know what I was doing, but I just got a phone call from a random caller and I answered it. And obviously they, they told me the news. And I mean, I was super, super happy and excited to kind of share with my family. Um, but like I said, it was an unbelievable experience, something that I'll probably never forget and probably will be one of the best uh, moments in my life and in hockey. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, draft coming up this year. You're one of the top prospects for the draft. Of, is there a difference between your draft year and previous years? Do you feel like a little bit more pressure to maybe perform in this year rather than years past? And obviously, with COVID, it's kind of affected that as well with getting eyes on you and everything so how has that been for you do you feel any different about it yeah I mean I think there's a little bit of added pressure um but in your draft year you kind of have to take it as any other year um I think if you focus so much on the draft I mean the nerves and pressure will probably get to you and you won't be able to perform how you'd like so I think just taking it as a normal year and kind of having that thought in the back of your head not too worried about it um, is how I've tried to take this year. Um, so, I mean, it's a special year, obviously, um, with the draft coming up. But I think it's something that you can't focus too much upon. So, so last one for you. So, draft day coming up too. Uh, do you have plans for it? What are you most excited about? Like, yeah, what's going to happen for you? Uh, I mean, I'll probably be with my family for sure. Um, I assume it's going to be on the TV again. So who knows uh, how that's going to work out. But I know I'll be with my family that day. Um, and it'll be ex extremely special to hopefully hear my name called. So I'm excited for it. Well, perfect. Well, best of luck with all of that. And thanks for taking the time to speak with me today. Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me.